Hi everyone, this is Professor Smith, and this is going to be a little tutorial on how to read a website with actual US GDP data. This will get us a little bit above and beyond the textbook and see what's actually going on here in the US. Now the first thing you're going to want to click on is that link I have on Blackboard that says actual US GDP data, and it will take you to this site that's called the Bureau of Economic Analysis, or BEA. Dot gov and we're just going to go over a couple of things. Now the first thing that you're, you're going to want to notice is right here it says Q2, so Q stands for quarter. We have four quarters in a year, so Q2 would be the months of April, May, and June, and we can see that the economy fell by minus 0.6 percent, so minus means there was a decrease in GDP, so the economy is getting smaller, production is getting smaller. Um, in right, Q1, there was a minus 1.6% contraction. Okay, so again, the economy is contracting there. Now, one thing to just keep in mind, these percentages, it doesn't mean, for example, that in Q2, that GDP was minus 0.6% lower than Q1, because what they do is they, they annualize the change by multiplying by 4. Okay, so in other words, if I took minus 0.6% and divided by 4, that's how much the economy fell relative to Q1. So they annualized that number basically by multiplying by, by 4. The little chart on the right gives you prior quarters. So in 2021, Notice how the percent change in real GDP for each of the four quarters was positive. Okay, so that means the economy was growing in 2021. By definition, positive real GDP growth means you have a growing economy. And negative means you have a contracting economy. Now, to get a little bit more detail, if you click on current release, and then you scroll down a bit, it will actually go into the details about the components of GDP that we've been learning in class. So for example, right here it talks about what contributed to the decrease in real GDP. It talks about private inventory investments, so we learned that inventory means unsold goods. It talks about a decline in residential fixed investment. Remember, we learned that structures like buildings and houses are part of GDP in the investment category. So residential fixed investment is just fancy jargon for new housing construction because it's residential. There was actually a small decline in federal government spending, right? So that's kind of interesting because we think about if we listen to the news, that we have nothing but nonstop increases in federal government spending. But at least in just that quarter alone, there was actually a decrease, and there was also a decrease at the state and local level. Now, it tells us that there was a partial offset by increases in exports. Remember, exports are goods that we sell to other countries. They add positively to GDP. So if we're selling abroad, that's uh, and we're increasing those sales, that's actually going to help increase GDP or at least offset these other negative factors. And this one here is a big one in the real world. Consumer spending, we learned about in class, makes up about two-thirds of, of GDP. And it's actually telling us there was actually a slight uptick in consumer spending despite the fact that the overall quarter was down. Okay, so that, that metric alone might give you some hope that even though the economy is currently shrinking, consumption, which is a, a, an engine of economic growth, is still increasing a bit. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to show you one more, one more neat thing. If you really wanted to get into the weeds a bit, if you click on Tables Only, And then it's going to give you a list of additional data, so way more than we need to learn as an introductory level class. But I did want to show you in Table 1 
that what it lists here on the left are all the components of GDP that we learned about in class. And it breaks down whether each component increased or decreased. So if I scroll to the right, notice how in the column at the far right, I see the top line, the overall GDP, these are percent changes, we saw declined at minus 0.6. Now here, if I look at the individual components, consumption increased by actually 1.5%. So that's consistent with what we learned in the text on the prior page, that consumption actually helped offset the decline in GDP. So if you were trying to look at what's really driving the negative, you're going to want to look at, well, which numbers are decreasing, all right? So among this 1.5%, goods consumption is actually down. So cons consumers are spending less on physical goods. So you might ask yourself, well, how the heck could overall consumption be up by 1.5%? Well, it's because services increased by 3.6%. Okay, so we're spending less on goods, but more on services, and that gives us an overall net increase in consumption. Now, the text blurb on the past slide or the past page told us that investment decreased and I would look at there okay where are the negatives and it looks like this row here structures if I highlight that for you guys structures fell by about 13 percent okay so that means there's a steep decline in home new home construction that was occurring in quarter two okay so that's useful information to you if you were thinking about, for example, the future of the housing market, right, at least in terms of new construction. Okay, negative inventory investment means that firms are selling some of their unsold goods. Okay, so again, that could potentially mean um, different things for the, the future of the economy. Notice how, again, on the last page, it said exports were a positive to GDP. This row tells us right here that exports increased by a nice 17.6%, and especially service exports increased by a nice 25.4%. Okay, um, it looks like we were also importing a little bit more. Okay, so that's a negative to GDP. But again, in this case, the exports more than offset that. Okay, so our trade balance was actually increasing in Q2. Here again, we can see the overall decline in government spending at minus 1.8%. And non-defense federal spending actually fell and has actually been, if you look historically, has been going down since 2021. So pretty interesting. Okay, so at this point, hopefully you guys have a introductory level handle on how to apply our concepts to actual US GDP data.